Good day everyone. I'm Michael. And I'm using a text-to-speech program to have a more clear speech and audio. In this video lesson, you will learn the following. 1. Create a Xamarin form absolute layout in XAML. 2. Position and overlap elements. So what is absolute layout? An absolute layout is used to position and size children using explicit values. The position is specified by the upper left corner of the child relative to the upper left corner of the absolute layout in device independent units. Absolute layout also implements a proportional positioning and sizing feature. In addition, unlike some other layout classes, absolute layout is able to position children so that they overlap. An absolute layout should be regarded as a special purpose layout to be used only when you can impose a size on children or when the element's size doesn't affect the positioning of other children. The absolute layout class defines the following properties. First is the layout bounds of type rectangle, which is an attached property that represents the position and size of a child. The default value of this property is 0, 0, auto size, auto size. Second is layout flags of type absolute layout flags, which is an attached property that indicates whether properties of the layout bounds used to position and size the child are interpreted proportionally. The default value of this property is none. These properties are backed by bindable property objects, which means that the properties can be targets of data bindings and styled. Now let's go to Visual Studio and do some coding. I already created the project and deleted its initial content. To demonstrate the uses of absolute layout, I will be using a label and a box view. A box view renders a simple rectangle of a specified width, height, and color. You can use box view for decoration, rudimentary graphics, and for interaction with the user through touch. Now let's start by adding the absolute layout element. And set its background to gray. Then run the app first. As you can see, it is similar to stack layout in grid. It initially fills the whole screen. Now let's go back to Visual Studio and add some elements. Let's add a label and a box view. By default, the position of the child of the absolute layout is set to 0 and 0. That is why the elements that we just added are at the upper left corner of the screen. To define its position and size, we need add an attached bindable property of the absolute layout called layout bounds. There are two formats to set the values of layout bounds attached property. First is by passing two values. The X and Y. The X and Y values indicate the position of the upper left corner of the child relative to its parent. Second is by passing four values. The X, Y, width, height. With this format, the X and Y values indicate the position of the upper left corner of the child relative to its parent while the width and height values indicate the child's size, in this case, the box view. Just a quick reminder. Horizontal options and vertical options properties have no effect on children of an absolute layout. Now let me show you another example where children of the absolute layout overlap.
In this example, the position of each box view object is defined using the first two absolute values that are specified in the absolute layout.layout .layout bounds attached property. The size of each box view is defined using the third and fourth values. The position of the label object is defined using the two absolute values that are specified in the absolute layout.layout .layout bounds attached property. Size values are not specified for the label, and so it's unconstrained in sizes itself. In all cases, the absolute values represent device-independent units. Using absolute values for positioning and sizing children can be problematic, because different devices have different screen sizes and resolutions. Therefore, the coordinates for the center of the screen on one device may be offset on other devices. So instead of passing an absolute value, we will pass proportional values. Values range from 0 to 1. To do this, we need to add another attached property of the absolute layout called layout flags on each child. Let's modify the code and position a box view at the center of another box view. Now let's change the values of this box view to proportional values. Now the maroon box view is at the center of the screen, and the gray box view occupies the screen. Now let me explain how it works. This values are proportional values. To recognize that it is a proportional value, we set its layout flags to all. The first two values indicate the upper left position of the element. The last two values, which are 1 and 1. This means that we want the box to occupy 100% of its parent element, in this case, the absolute layout. While the layout flags for this is set to position proportional. This means that the position values only are set to proportional. Then the rest is absolute. We set its left position to 0.5 and upper position to 0.5, meaning, we want to position of this box view 50% of the screen from left and 50% of the screen from top, reference to the center of the element. These last two values are still absolute values. Since we set the layout flag to position proportional only, the absolute layout flag's enumeration defines the following members. First is the none, which is the default value. We have also x proportional, y proportional, width proportional. Height proportional, size proportional. Position proportional, the we use to the maroon box view. And last is all. The absolute layout flags enumeration is a flags enumeration, which means that enumeration members can be combined. This is accomplished in XAML with a comma separated list, and in C sharp with the bitwise or operator. Let's add a button with two layout flags set to it. Now this button is positioned at the bottom of the screen. The first three values of the layout bounds are proportional values. 
because the layout flags are set to positional proportional and width proportional. With position proportional, we want its upper left position to be proportion. And with width proportional, we want its width to be proportional too. The only absolute value left is the height of the button, which is set to 55. That's all for this video lesson. If you have questions, suggestions, something to add, or you think something is missing or incorrect to the lesson, please let me know. Again, this is Michael, thank you and see you at my next video lesson. Keep safe everyone!